Hello, my name is Nathan Ayersman and I'm the business unit manager for Process Heat here at the Valen Corporation. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about one of the biggest process heat applications in the industry, tank heating. Tanks can range from a tiny five gallon bucket to a huge million barrel crude storage facility. They can be cylindrical, rectangular, above ground, below ground, and can contain everything from water to extremely corrosive chemicals and acids. We've heated them all. We approach tank heating with one of two philosophies. Either we're maintaining temperature or we're increasing temperature. Maintaining temperature is typically done externally, either by the use of heat trays or blanket heaters wrapped around the circumference of the tank. Increasing temperature is usually accomplished via immersion where the heater is in direct contact with the fluid inside the tank. For information on the math behind tank heating, please reference our video on the process heat calculations using the link provided in the video description below. This is a very thorough video and will walk you through, step by step, how to determine the size of your heater. Let's focus on increasing the tank temperature via direct immersion. There are four types of immersion heaters, flange, screw plug, over the side, and bayonet. These heaters all perform the same function, but they have slightly different designs and attachment styles. Flange and screw plug heaters are very similar. They both have tubular or flat bladed elements welded onto the base. They should be installed horizontally in the bottom one third of the tank. The only difference between these two heater types is how they attach. Screw plug heaters use national pipe thread mating connections to screw into the side of the tank. Maximum size of the thread is two and a half inches, and since you can only fit a few elements on a two and a half inch screw plug, you're fairly limited on wattage. Flange heaters use standard ANSI flange sizes and are bolted to the side of the tank using hex heads, and we can put some pretty big systems together. This is a picture of my good friend Ryan Krauss with a 42 inch flange heater, which is a 1.2 megawatt design. Over the side heaters, like flange and screw plug, also consist of tubular or flat blade elements. They're typically used when you don't have access to openings on the sides of the tank. They have an L-shaped design and are oftentimes installed directly into the top of an open top tank. The heating elements are immersed in the liquid, generally near the bottom, but be careful not to put it right on the bottom as there's oftentimes a layer of sludge or buildup and you don't want the heaters to sit in that. This type of heater allows for easy portability and removal. The bayonet or pipe insert heaters are used in large above ground storage tanks where serviceability is a crucial factor. The heaters have to be mounted horizontally, again, usually in the bottom one third of the tank. They have an open coil heating element located inside the pipe. When this heater is turned on, the element heats the pipe, which in turn heats the fluid inside the tank. Since the bayonet heaters have this two piece design, the actual heating element can be removed without requiring the tank to be drained. This allows for the heater to be regularly serviced, maintained, and replaced with ease. Not only are they serviceable, but bayonet heaters also provide a lower watt density because the heat is being spread across a large diameter pipe as opposed to the smaller diameter heating elements. This helps to prevent coking and overheating, both of which reduce heater life. Also, because they're flexible, they don't require a lot of space to replace the elements, which makes them perfect for tank farms. For an overview on watt density, please see the link to our video in the description below. No matter what type of heater you use, we always recommend that you utilize a thermal loop to control and monitor the system. For more information on thermal loops, please visit our website at www.valen.com or click the YouTube link in the video description below. Here's a pro tip. Attach a thermocouple on the heater's sheath to read its temperature, then data log that value during normal operations. You can trend this temperature, thereby tracking the heater performance and even extrapolate to life expectancy. An increasing temperature could indicate sludge buildup on the elements, which would hinder heat transfer and ultimately cause a burnout. I hope this video was helpful. For information on Valen's offering and how to contact us, please click on the links provided in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you again and stay tuned for more how-to videos in the future.